Welcome back to Pride. Today we're going to be doing a valve adjustment. I've seen a couple of videos out there on valve adjustments. I was looking, doing some research before doing my valve adjustment. And I noticed that a lot of the videos out there don't cover everything. So we're going to go over piece by piece every step you need to take to do your valve adjustment on your dirt bike. This is a 200cc Enduro. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that seat off. We're going to take the side panels off. And we're going to take that spark plug out. Alright, so I got my seat off. We need to get to that spark plug. We can take just this side panel off, but to do the valve adjustment, we're going to need to take the whole gas tank off anyway. This side panel is going to come right off with the gas tank. The gas tank on this bike is just one 13 millimeter bolt right here. So I'm just going to take that bolt off and get that gas tank off right there. So once you get that bolt out, before you try to take your gas tank off, you're going to want to go down by the carburetor. You're going to have to take that fuel line off before taking your gas tank off. This way you're not pulling on anything when you remove that gas tank. I'm going to get this camera set up in a nice spot so that you can see how this gas tank comes off. And this is the only piece that I need to remove other than that 13 millimeter bolt. So we already removed our bolt. Our gas tank is free. There's two spots in the front that hook on, so you're going to want to lift your gas tank and pull back. I'm basically pulling back towards the camera. You can straighten out your handlebars, give yourself some more room, and that gas tank is just going to come right off those two fittings. I'll give you a little view of the inside. This way you can see how that sets these fittings right here sit right on two rubber knobs that hold it in place now that we got our gas tank off next thing you want to do is get that spark plug out so we're going to take that spark plug cap off we're going to get that spark plug out because one of the parts of doing a valve adjustment is rotating the engine to top dead center you never want to rotate an engine that has a spark plug in it because it can turn over Spark plug is out. You always want to take a look at your spark plug. The spark plug will tell you a lot. You can see that black soot on the top of the plug. That means that the bike is running too rich, too much gas. So this valve adjustment should take care of this problem. Next thing you want to do is remove the cap right here on the side, left side of your engine. All dirt bikes will have different style caps right there. And there will always be a vision hole right here that you can see through. I'll show you in a minute why we have to remove this so that we can see through. This one's just a flathead screwdriver. Some bikes use Allen keys. And then we just got four 8mm bolts right here that I'm going to remove. And now we have access to that 14mm bolt. That's what's going to turn the engine over. And we're going to be able to see through and see the flywheel. We'll know when we're at top dead center. But first, before we do that, we want to remove that valve cover right there. That's just three 10 millimeter bolts right there that I'm going to remove now. So I got all three of those bolts out. We got two on this right side. Only one on that left side. We're going to remove that valve cover. If you turn it sideways, just be real gentle with it. You could get that valve cover off fairly easy. Now we're going to use a 14 millimeter socket and a little extension. Slip that on. This way we could turn this engine. And we're going to turn the engine counterclockwise. So we're going to turn towards the front tire. As we're turning, you'll see the valves move. The valve on your right is the intake valve. The valve on the left that's moving down right now is the exhaust valve. While you're moving the engine, you're going to look through that hole for that T-mark that you see right there. But that's not where we want it. We want the line lined up with the notch when we get to top dead center.
it's coming up right here and I passed it so I'm gonna take another spin around when I take another spin around it might be on the compression side now it's gonna come up right here after this next pass coming up nice and slow and you want to line up that line perfectly with that notch now we're at top dead center and one thing you can do to check is make sure that you have a little play in those rocker arms right there see how you got a little play it's not completely tight you can even hear that click that means we're at top dead center and there's no stress on those valves and now for the valve adjustment you're going to need 10 millimeter open end wrench for that locking nut right there that's what holds the positioning in place you're going to need some needle nose pliers for the valve adjustment and you're going to need your feeler gauge that way you know what size gap to put in between all right I think I got a pretty good view for you guys there I'll try not to get in the way too much first you're gonna loosen those locking nuts right there those are what hold that position for you we've already got our engine at top dead center so we can do the job that we're trying to do Loosen those locking nuts up right there. Every bike has its specs for the gap size. So I'm gapping this bike to the specs that I received for it. The very tip of the feeler gauge has less. We can just turn by hand since everything is loose. We want to get that feeler gauge in with just a little bit of pull just a little bit grazing we don't want the feeler gauge to be stuck in there so if I was to go by the tip of the feeler gauge here the very very tip is thinner than the rest that's just for easy access to be able to slide it in you want to go in deep enough so you make sure you're getting the right gauge that you want and you can always check and go a little bit tighter and see if you can still get that feeler gauge out then you're not too tight you're good once you get your positioning to where you want it you're gonna want to lock it in place and I'll show you in just a second I just want to take my time and make sure yep that I've got the gap exactly the way I want it so what I like to do is now I want to grab hold of that top adjusting screw or nub I should call it and I don't want to let that change its position and now by hand I can tighten down that locking nut and then I'm gonna slide my open end wrench on there and tighten it down without changing the position of that top nub if I was to tighten this while everything was loose that top nut would move excuse me that top nub would move and change our positioning it would tighten it back down let's take a look at our gap again now that everything is tightened down and this is the intake side right here and it stayed perfectly and I'm just gonna check my locking nut once more make sure that's nice and tight I don't want to over tighten that and now we're gonna go to our exhaust side and we're gonna be adjusting that one the same exact specs that we did on the intake side see if I can 
do this without getting in the way of the view. Gonna go from the other side of the bike. That's a little too tight still. Take your time with it. Make sure you got the exact amount. You want it to pull a little bit as you're pulling that feeler gauge out. Almost like a, a magnet is just pulling on that metal just a little bit. Not enough to make it hold it back, but enough just to give it a little bit of slight resistance. That's how you know you got that exact measurement. And once you're happy with it again, you want to make sure that you keep that adjustment nut steady while tightening down that locking nut that's going to keep it in place. Okay. Make sure not to over tighten, just snug, and then always double check. We've got everything here, everything's open. And that's perfect, that gives just a little bit of pull. All right, now our adjustment is done. We're gonna slide that valve cover back on. Valve cover should come off real easy. You just gotta turn it the right way when taking it out from underneath the frame. You wanna slide those bolts back in nice and easy. You should be able to get them all the way down hand tight before needing to use a wrench. And that goes for any bolt on your bike. You always want to be able to go hand tight on everything. This way you make sure you're not cross threading anything takes a little bit longer. I know you're in a rush and you're, you want to get that wrench on there and tighten it down and be done with it. But it really makes a difference taking your time and tightening everything down by hand before tightening them down with a wrench or socket wrench. Because you always risk cross threading. And then you've got a whole nother job on your hands other than the job you were just trying to do. If you look at the valve cover from the side, let me move the camera real quick, give you guys a real good view of this. You can see that gasket right inside. So this is the valve cover that I just put back on. You can see that gasket inside. You're gonna wanna go down by hand, and now you're gonna wanna tighten them down just until you see that gasket compress. So this is a good way to prevent from over tightening. You see that gasket compress on that left side? And now let's go over to that right side. Let's get that right side tightened down. You never want to over tighten any of these bolts. You just want to see that that valve cover is compressing down. Once it's compressed down, you're good to go. Get that bolt on that opposite side. Right over here. We already got it hand tight. Now we're going to tighten him down. And just compress that side. And you can see the valve cover compressed down. As I'm tightening that bolt, once you're compressed down, you're good. Now our valve adjustment is done. The valve cover is back on. All we got to do is throw that spark plug back in. Put the spark plug cap back on. Come over to the other side of the engine. 
put our caps back on our C hole right here that was so that we can see that we were at top dead center right on the flywheel another part of the bike that you don't want to over tighten and I always put it coming straight out again right back to the setting it was at before I started when I took it off so now we're just gonna put everything back we're gonna throw that gas tank back on hook our fuel line back up get everything done back to the way it was and uh, start up the bike and see how it sounds with its valve adjustment all right guys thank you for watching I hope this helps you out if you're trying to do a valve adjustment this bike is leaving tomorrow so I wanted to give it a good valve adjustment and an oil change so I got all that done and it's ready to go to its new owner